Hello! In this video we'll figure out the different ways to place the camera in order to render our scene. I think placing the camera deserves its own quick video because there are like a fair number of ways to do it. So it'll be more clear what's happening if I change the outliner into a 3D view and press number pad 0 in it to look through the camera. I can use the mouse wheel to zoom into the lighter area which is what the camera actually sees. Incidentally the black area is the passepartout, it can be adjusted in the object, da object data button after selecting the camera to be more or less opaque. Firstly we can manipulate the camera the same as any other object so that's to say after selecting it with right click we can use G to grab it and R to rotate it. In a lot of cases it's useful to use its local axis for this so if we switch to the local axis orientation for the manipulators we can see that the blue arrow here, the Z axis, is pointing in the right direction if I wanted to move the camera towards whatever it's pointing at. So I could press G, Z, Z to use that axis and move it in that direction. If we rotate the camera around its local Z axis by pressing R, Z, Z, it will roll. It's worth noting we can do this from camera view also. So I'll swap these views around now by holding down control over the splitters in the top right and left click dragging into the smaller editor. R, R will also work for trackball rotation. It's rather useful to hold down shift when using this to slow down the movement as it can be a bit quick to sometimes lose yourself. So this is okay but we have some more options available. One of those options is in the properties region. It's called lock camera to view. So the camera doesn't have to be selected for this to work. So with this option enabled from camera view we can use the normal viewport controls to move the view and the camera will lock to it. So that's middle mouse for rotating, the scroll wheel to move forward and back and shift and the middle mouse to pan around. If you're used to the regular viewport controls this will probably feel quite natural. Just remember to turn that option off or at least remember that it's on because it's quite easy to forget. So without that option on for example rotating the view when in camera view will move out of camera view into a user perspective but of course with it enabled it will move your camera. So there is actually a red border around the, uh, the view there when it's active. The camera can be snapped to the current viewport's viewing angle using control alt number pad 0. Uh, that option is also found in the view menu under align as align active camera to view. Another way to do this would be to use walk or fly mode depending which is set in the user preferences. So from camera view pressing shift F in this case uh, walk mode uses more or less the same controls as you'd find in a FPS game. So that's the WASDA keys W, A, S and D for left, right, forward and back and the mouse is used to look around. Q and E will be up and down and to speed up or slow down the movement uh, use the mouse scroll wheel. So when in fly mode actually the 3D views header will give a reminder of the keys available. It's often useful to have the camera always look at some target object which can be placed in the scene and moved or animated so the camera always faces that way. This can be done with any object really but generally it's useful to use an empty object which won't get in our way or doesn't show in the final render. I'll put the 3D cursor here and use Shift A and add in an empty. It doesn't matter what sort but I'll choose plain axis because it's at the top. We're going to use an object constraint to do this and a quick way to set it up is to select the camera, Shift select the empty and press Ctrl T and choose Track to Constraint. This places a constraint on the camera which we can see in the constraints buttons when having the camera selected. We could add this manually but the Ctrl T shortcut has added in the appropriate settings for us uh, in this case. So constraints can be complex and this video isn't going to cover them in detail. However I've included a note of this here as an option you might want to be aware of. It might be worth following up if you think it could be valuable for what you're doing. Let's switch the outliner to look through the camera again and it should be clear now that as I move the empty around the camera stays pointing at it. Similarly, if I move the camera, it stays facing in that direction. So 
So let's say we're happy with the location of our camera and we're ready to render our epic scene. Let's just do it and see what happens. We can push F12 as is shown in the render menu in the info editor or choose in the render buttons which looks like a camera here the option render. Well yeah it's just a cube but it's our cube. And we'll notice, particularly because we're using the Blender render engine, that one side is really dark, it has no light. Press escape to leave the image editor which is showing the render. Now, with only one lamp in the scene, in this case, that's why we get that darkness. We need some other light to shine from the other side. So what I'm going to do just quickly to improve this is, is change this lamp into a sun lamp by selecting it, going to the object data button and choosing sun from the lamp panel near the top. I'll point it first from top view with number pad 7, sort of roughly perpendicular to the line of sight of the camera by grabbing it with G and rotating with R. And then from front view, that's number pad 1, just a kind of shallow downward angle. Back to top view, I want to duplicate it and have another lamp then pointing from the opposite side to fill those dark places. We can find duplicate in the tools tab of the tool region and hovering over will reveal the hotkey at shift D. So with shift D, I will bring it over to the other side. A quick adjustment of the lamps then. The one we duplicated, I'll change into a Hemi lamp by going to the object data button and selecting Hemi. I'll also set its energy down to about 0.25 and change the color to a very pale blue or purple to sort of represent the sky. The sun lamp, I will select and change its color to a pale yellow to represent the yellow we get from the sun rather than a white, which is rather unnatural. A render should now reveal a more pleasing result. The purpose of this video was to show various ways of placing the camera. My preference is to use the lock camera feature first of all to get a general placement and if it needs fine tuning sort of consider the other methods like grabbing the camera from camera view and adjusting that way. Now our render is basic but we have a lighting setup that can work just to visualize things quickly in a sort of rudimentary way. Certainly these aspects can be covered in more detail in a later video. For now though, have a play with it, add more lights, change things around and sort of see what happens.